The match failed to produce a single try and ended Warrington 4, Halifax 4. The replay took place at Odsall Stadium, Bradford. A world record crowd of over 102,000 fans were there. It's estimated that several thousand more were actually inside Odsall and it's a minor miracle a major disaster didn't occur. The terraces were made up of railway sleepers set in ashes. Fans who couldn't see lifted out the sleepers and piled them up to obtain a better view. And the match was certainly a better one than had been witnessed at Wembley. Jim Challoner achieved what no one had managed then, scoring the first try way out, just too far out for Bath to convert. The Aussie was having no luck with his goal kicks, this missed by a whisker. The half-time interval gave the vociferous Albert Fernley chance to wind up his Halifax teammates. Wire took a breather. It really was a rousing final. Halifax applied the pressure, trying to get back into the match. They had some good moves, but that was a forward pass. Warrington not only held on, despite Halifax coming back with that penalty, Bevan showed all his tricks going down the wing, and then Bath did land a penalty goal. Another Griffiths goal cut the deficit to 5-4, but this was to be Warrington's day. Although Bath again failed to get the range, Warrington came again, another tilt down the right, led by who else but Bevan, and finally it's Jerry Helm going over to clinch victory. A Warrington success by eight points to four, the Challenge Cup was theirs again. Three days later, deadlock at Wembley, Bradford's Odsall Stadium was chosen for the replay, a game which would go down in history. Over 102,000 spectators filled the Odsall Stadium at Bradford, the largest number ever recorded at a Rugby League Cup final. After a draw at Wembley, Warrington and Halifax had returned to the north to resume the contest. Halifax, wearing striped jerseys, kicked off and the replay was on. The Warrington forwards began with some fast, open passing and soon began to threaten the Halifax defence. After only eight minutes of play, they took the lead when Jim Challenow dashed over the line for the first try. <laughs> Halifax started to retaliate, but they were prevented from scoring by very sturdy defence. Warrington indeed were playing splendid football, even better than at Wembley. However, things looked better for Halifax 20 minutes later, when they were awarded a penalty inside the Warrington 25. Griffiths took the kick. <laughs> Half time and the score, 3-2. Warrington opened up the game again with some very fast passing movements, which looked pretty dangerous and in fact almost resulted in some additional points. But the scoring didn't start again until 60 minutes after the interval. Then Harry Bars landed a superb goal from 35 yards to increase the lead. <laughs> Just four minutes later, McCormick obstructed Daniels, the Halifax wing 3Q. Griffiths again took the kick. <laughs> At this stage, Warrington were only one point ahead. Seven minutes later, Jerry Helm, the Warrington scrum half, took a pass near the halfway line. After a splendid run, he got the try that guaranteed victory. With the final score, 8-4, the crowd poured onto the field to congratulate the players on a first-rate final. With the game on a high following that huge world record...